I forgot to describe last time how in San Felipe we rinsed out Robbie's aching ear and I pulled out what looked to be a booger-covered crustacean, probably from cleaning the bottom of our boat. The air was filled with purple haze from brush fires burning all over the state of California. Even Sausalito had some fires burning above the town at one point. A helicopter quickly swooped in to dump seawater and stop the blaze. Our wonderful friend Heather invited us to come sail with her and the team upon the retired America's Cup sailboat number 76. I'm a little bit out of my element actually. It's crazy. Everything is very, very different. It's similar but different from what other racing boats have been on. The old racing vessel is showing her age a little bit, but the entire construction is of carbon fiber and the array of coffee grinder drivers for the winches is a testament to the pressures that can be achieved on this boat. The accommodations are sparse, but today the cockpit was to hold 10 people or so. We prepared to raise the 100 plus foot mainsail. The process for raising the sails is very similar to on our own boat, just everything larger in size. We make sure that the main halyard and clue are attached properly to the mainsail. We head directly into the wind and begin by raising the sail by hand. <laughs> then eventually we wrap the main halyard around the winch and crank up those last couple of remaining feet. There was very little wind, and we only managed to make one tack before turning on the engine again. On my way, I never used the winches. I was about to take them out. Yeah. We're more turning on a Magus Cup boat. That's great. <laughs> Many visitors who come to San Francisco long to dip in under the Golden Gate Bridge. So that's where we were headed. After a long journey into the States and further north, we were already hitching a ride back down to Rosa in San Felipe. It was good to be home and to see the inside of our little boat, which was so familiar to us now. We went straight to work installing some new gear. We had to tie some round slides onto the spare mainsail that we had picked up some time ago. So we're gonna see how this free sail works tomorrow. Only the deck was particularly dirty and dusty when we came back to the boat. The inside was untouched, without even a cobweb. The so-called new mainsail looked good, but one of our flexible water tanks had a puncture in it from a rough piece of fiberglass under the saloon seats. We sealed it up nicely with a bicycle tire patch. On top of that, we pressed down a wet through piece of cotton cloth with Cicaflex. It hasn't leaked at all. I'm fastening the, the o-ring so it hopefully makes a better seal. The truth is that this, the, the o-rings are very small and kind of squished from doing this a long time. Yeah. We brought back with us lots of spectra line for splicing into new lifelines. Mm -hmm. 
we wanted to make rope lifelines so that we could easily splice and adjust them as needed. They are soft on the hands, and as they deteriorate over time, they are less likely to produce sharp, broken strands, like the old metal cable ones did. Hmm. I'm going to take them all tomorrow out and give them a good stretch. I haven't dropped any of the water yet. Final installation, and the dock seemed to come apart in anticipation of our leaving. Another Sea Shepherd boat fueled up and went out ahead of us. The Whale Museum boat, tied to the dock next to us, works with the Sea Shepherd to protect wildlife in the area. It all seemed pretty friendly, as the Whale Museum boat have a good relationship with the local shrimping boats, and they shared a little bit of their free shrimp with us that evening. Our drawer is about 90% knives and sharpening stones. It seems like we seem to be missing all our spoons. That's the only odd thing upon our return to San Felipe. Lastly, we both got haircuts for aerodynamics. Yeah, everything's ready to go. Things tied down more or less. Uh... Nothing was disturbed, nothing moved. It was like we hadn't left her for more than a day. Except for the spoons. Except for the spoons. We've come back with some materials. We bought a giant vat of epoxy. We got some slabs of G10 for chain plates and uh, or backing plates for uh, chain plates as well as under the compression post. Even though we did extensive mast work in the last year back up in San Francisco, the mast is compressing the deck and it has something to do with the compression post being compressed into the bilge and it's Currently, not an ideal setup under there. We fueled and watered up and headed out into the bumpy Sea of Cortez. Deep and short. Our favorite. Mm, yep. The first thing that happened upon raising our mainsail was that the plastic slides immediately cracked and popped. We made our way under only our forward sail to Bahia Willard. Because of the short winter days now, we sketchily entered the anchorage at night and determined that we should take a better look from the air during the daylight. During our time away from the boat, we managed to acquire a DJI Spark drone with a sweet little gimbaled camera, so we sent it up to take a look. There are two bays here, Bahia Willard to the north and Gonzaga Bay on the right. The two bays are separated by a spit of sand lined with gringo summer homes and a small landing strip. We had caught up with the Farley Moat crew who were hanging out in the deeper Gonzaga side. We're really lucky that we landed the drone when we did as this little plane took off right after. We set out just as the sun was rising to make our way further south, back to the warmth, 
because this northern sea of Cortez was just a little bit too cold for us at this time of the year. Robbie replaced the plastic slides with metal ones from our previous mainsail, and we were off sailing again. The lines were out, but there was still no fish biting. What was up with that? We tried to go half shelter in Puerto Cito. Ramionics was wrong as usual. We overshot it. It said we were somewhere, but we were like two miles south of it. So then we had to continue at night. We had to go between islands at night. It's pretty spooky and we made an entrance. We went through the enchanted islands at night. We still hadn't cleaned the bottom side of Rosa after she had been sitting in the marina, but she was sliding along all right. Maybe when we go down a little bit more, I'll have the courage to, to clean the bottom. What is the date today, Ravi? What is the day? Today is 11th of December, our wedding anniversary. It's been three years to this day that we've put up with each other. For our special, lovely wedding anniversary meal, we have lentils. Yesterday's lentils. Yesterday, leftover lentils? Yeah, no, which... but they are very good and they're better the second day around, especially in a pressure cooker. You bring up those lentils, those leftover lentils, all the way to pressure, all the way to boiling point in the pressure cooker. They last overnight, they can last several days, um, and then you just heat them up again. And that's what we've done, and they are, mwah, they're just better the second day. And we've also got some fresh avocado and tomato salad. Thank you, Ravi. My pleasure. The new lifelines were looking all pretty and fancy, and they had also been doing a good job at keeping us both on deck during our bumpy ride the previous sailing night. We're going to that volcano. And so we kept on course to Isla Coronado, also known as Isla Smith, where we would have to anchor again in the dark. You can like, subscribe, and share to help us continue making these videos. You can also contribute regularly on Patreon or send us a tip through PayPal. Thank you to our patrons.